Hello everyone and welcome back to season 6 of the New York Jets franchise and our Thursday night game against the Las Vegas Raiders. This season the Raiders have lacked a winning mentality and it, it shows in their record. A dismal 2-11 and 11. and if they aren't careful they could earn the title of worst in the NFL and get the first draft pick. Uh, that gives them a big incentive to play well tonight, but in truth, they have the number 31 offense in the league, only beating out the Jets, who are dead last, and they need the help. Derek Carr is still their quarterback, but at 32, they is losing overall points hand over fist. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Vegas take a quarterback this season in the draft. I'm just not sure who they would take since the quarterback pool isn't very strong at all. The key for the Jets is not overlooking this team or they could stay in the hunt for a wild card spot for the rest of the season. It all depends greatly on the play of Sam Darnold. He's been very inconsistent this season so being on top of his game is a must. Coach Dale opted to give the team a little rest over hitting practice hard during this short week, so we'll see if that helped or hurt the team. Can New York finish the regular season strong? To find out, let's watch as the Jets try to dispense with the Raiders here on the Football Freaks Sports Network. Rashad Cook is back deep in the end zone for Las Vegas and Daniel Carlson gets us underway here in MetLife Stadium. Ball goes out of the back of the end zone and on comes Derek Carr. Now in his 10th season as the Raiders signal caller. 13 interceptions and 17 touchdowns so far this season. Starting from their own 25 out of the shotgun formation. First play will be a pass, and that is complete across the middle to fourth-year tight end Marco Sellers. That's down at the 46-yard line. And another pass, this one complete to Traquan Smith. And another Raider first down. Now from the 41 inside jet territory, a big yardage up the left side numbers. Tevin Coleman has another first down at the 26 yard line. And a shotgun again. This time, Carr goes down in the backfield. Leonard Williams making the sack back at the 32. So on second and 15, Coleman gets big yardage to the 15 yard line. The Raiders just not having any trouble at all ripping off big yardage plays. And this one is complete. Rookie Denzel Ziegler takes it out of bounds at the 6. Coleman up the hash marks on the left side to the 1 yard line. There you see his numbers from last week. 16 rushes, 73 yards and a touchdown. And this time... Chad Franklin is stopped in the backfield by Polite. And there is the offensive line of the Raiders. Jack Willig. It definitely is a revenge game for him. Carr lets it fly and it's a touchdown. Marco Sellers. A simple up and out and the Raiders take the lead in this football game. 7 to nothing. Las Vegas moves the ball quite easily. Well, will the Jets be able to do the same thing? There's Sam Darnold's numbers. Also 13 interceptions, but 24 touchdowns to go along with that. Not as many yards as Carr, but that inconsistency factor, well, that may have something to do with it this season. The first throw is a defensive pass interference against the Raiders. And the guilty party is Cravon LeBlanc. That'll give the Jets a first down out of 36. And Jackson can't get out of the backfield. That brings up third and 12. Donald alone in the backfield. And he, wait a minute. 
This is a fumble. And Darnold tried to throw it. It looked like a forward pass to me. I don't think they're going to review this. You can see Ibukam coming on the rush. And that one, I don't know. It looked like a forward pass. But they're going to give it to the Raiders anyway. And out comes Derek Carr in excellent field position at the 26. Drops back, throws, and it's incomplete. Broken up by Ramirez. Third and nine. The throw is knocked away by Ramirez again. And out comes Randy Bullock. And from 42 yards out, he hooks it just outside on the left. And the score remains the same. 7-0 Vegas. Now Darnold drops back and completes this one to Wesco out at the 37-yard line. And here is the Raiders defensive unit. Samson Ebicom in that linebacking crew it tends to be a force. And of course, Craven LeBlanc that already had a defensive pass interference call, but he can be a dangerous cornerback. Jackson picks up the first down out at the 43-yard line. Alone in the backfield this time. He spins his way and uh, oh gee, he can't get out of there. Just too many white shirts around him. Second and 13. The pass over the middle is deflected and intercepted by Craven LeBlanc. Oh, how that comes true. I was just talking about him and <laughs> he de intercepts the football. So that gives the ball back to the Raiders, but unable to do anything with it. Three and out. It's back in the hands of the Jets. The screen pass goes for a first down and more out to the 40-yard line. That will bring us to the end of quarter number one. The Raiders still on top, seven to nothing. Jackson alone in the backfield, the fake handoff. And Darnold finally decides to run it first down, dives to the 45. And that gives the Jets another first down. I'd certainly like to see him slide in those situations. This time he throws it deep and it's a touchdown. John Ross. A 45-yard strike. It's hard to keep up with the speed of Ross. And on this play, Conley just got left in the dust. But after a missed extra point, it's 7-6 Raiders. Now out of the shotgun, Carr back to pass. Throws over the middle, complete to Coleman. And he has the first down out to the 47. To give this time to Coleman as well, and he's out to the 47. Second and four. Back to pass. Carr throws over the middle, complete to Ziegler, and he's down to the 29 already. Now, third and 12. The pass goes over the middle, complete. That's Sellers, and he does not make it to the first down marker. That'll bring on Randy Bullock. And he'll put up a 39-yard field goal, and it's up and good. That extends the Raiders' lead to 10-6. And after a jet three and out, the ball is in the possession of the Raiders. Carr out of the shotgun. Back to pass, throws deep and intercepted. Marcus May. Makes the grab at the 25-yard line. Carr just unloads that before getting hit by Williams. The result is just a little bit of a short pass. And May is there to take advantage of the situation. But after another jet three and out, it's 
The Raiders football back to pass. Carr throws and it's almost intercepted. Second and 10. The throw this time complete to Ziegler. Out at the 41, a nine yard pickup. Carr on third down, drops back, throws complete to Sellers. He has the first down out the 49. Coleman takes it. Oh, he misses the handoff. And Carr is dropped in the backfield. A two minute warning, and it's still 10 to 6. Third and 16 now. Now I would guess that run was to make the Jets burn a timeout, and they do. Fourth and 17, punt upcoming, and it drops at the two and is down at the three. That puts the Jets in very poor position. Pass over the middle is incomplete. Second and 10. The run is stopped at the four. Well, they're gonna call it the three. So third and 11, Jacobs barely gets out of the backfield. And that one is a punt as well. So a minute and 25 seconds left in the first half. Carr throws out to Sellers, but Cashman is there to make the tackle. Second and nine. Another pass, the same exact play, and he is, this time it's big yardage for Coleman. Finally stopped at the 27. And that brings out Randy Bullock. And he puts through a 39-yard field goal. And the Raiders take the lead into halftime, 13-6. Now with a halftime report is Eurocat Baby. Once again, it appears that the New York's offense is lacking the spark they need, falling behind here at the break. And losing their backup tight end, Jordan Thomas, to a torn MCL didn't help anything. Dawson Knox will have to step it up a little bit if he's going to fill that role. Word is still coming back on how long the training staff thinks that he'll be out of action, but I don't see him making an appearance yet during this season. This past week, something that caused a little celebration in the Jets camp was cornerback Brian Poole receiving AFC Defensive Player of the Week honors in view of his outstanding performance against the Chargers last week. I think the Jets are going to need that level of play if they're going to come back in this game tonight. The Jets are tied with the Steelers trying to secure a wild card spot. Yet all eyes on the New York squad will be on the Jets-Bills game this weekend as well. Remember there's still a chance they could win the AFC East if they keep winning and the Bills lose a game. For now the Jets need to focus on what they can control and that's winning this game here tonight. To find out what happens, stay tuned, because we'll be right back with the second half. Welcome back, everyone, to MetLife Stadium and our matchup of the two worst offenses in the NFL. Neither team has established much of a run game, but the passing seems to be the name of the game for both the Raiders and the Jets. The time of possession is resting on Las Vegas, and that could mean the tiring of the Jets' defense here as the game finishes out. Now, can New York somehow find a way to slow down this Raider offense, or will they continue to dominate the time spent on the field? Let's find out as the second half unfolds. The Jets have the first possession of the second half, and out of the eye formation. It's a run going up to the right side. Jacobs has the first down out to the 39 and out of bounds. The Raiders showing a single high look and oh, dropped in the backfield. Darnold back at the, back at the 33 by Maurice Hurst. And the throw deep down the sideline and incomplete intended for Ross. This time just not out front of him far enough and knocked away by Conley, as you'll see on the replay right there. That will give the Raiders their first opportunity 
of this second half. Dropping back, Carr completes it to Ziegler, and he's at the first down marker, and they gave it to him. Coleman weaves his way another first down to the 43. Oop, they're not going to give it to him second in inches. It doesn't matter, though, because he picks it up out of the backfield down to the 32-yard line of the Jets. Carr and the Raiders are just not playing like a 2-11 team right now anyway. Sellers makes the grab at the 15-yard line. That gives the Raiders another trip to the red zone. And out of the backfield, it's Coleman down to the 2-yard line. A first and goal situation and after a false start. Pass out to Montgomery, and he's in there for the touchdown. Carr finding David Montgomery out of the backfield. Ja'Kai Polite just not close enough to make the play on the ball, or even tackle Montgomery for that matter. And Ramirez tries to stop him at the goal line, but it is too late. That extends the Raider lead to 20-6. And five completions for Darnold all game long. Oh, that's not good, folks. And Jacobs goes up the left center, and he has a first down out to the 35. Darnold drifting right, and he is sacked. Back at the 30-yard line. Farrell gets to him, and that brings up a second and 15. Darnold back to pass again. Throws long. There's room out there. Ross has it. Dives into the end zone. Touchdown, Jets. A 70-yard touchdown pass play. Freddie Cox trying to keep up with John Ross on that play. And there is just no doing so. On the sideline, Coleman watches the Jumbotron in disbelief. And, uh, uh-oh, here comes Coach. And he wants to know what happened on that play. The Raiders take over at the 26-yard line. And Blake Cashman in the backfield makes the tackle on Montgomery. The throw out of the backfield goes to Coleman, and he's tackled at the 31-yard line. That's an eight-yard pickup, third and five now. Carr throws over the middle, incomplete, intended for Coleman again. So that means a stop for the Jets, so they'll take over at the 32-yard line. Out of the eye formation. Darnold back to pass, screen, and that's a first down and a little more. Out of bounds at the 45. Two tight ends left for the Jets. Jacobs runs left, and he gets out to the 48. Now on third and seven. The pass upcoming by Darnold goes deep into the end zone, and that, wait a minute. That was the nicest no call I've ever seen in a game. LeBlanc just grabbed onto Arsenault's shoulder and there was absolutely no call on it. That gives the ball back to the Raiders and it's a nine yard pickup by Sellers. Now with Coleman alone in the backfield. He gets the ball, first down and tackled at the 36. He's now made it over the 50-yard mark for the game. And that brings us to the end of quarter number three with your score, 20-13 Raiders. Carr out of the shotgun. The give to Coleman. He can't get out of the backfield. Carter making the stop. Now third and 12. Carr back to pass. Throws complete. Ziegler out to the 49-yard line inside of Jet territory. The Raiders are on the move again. And uh, that one is complete as well to Coleman. Down to the 42. 
Carr back to pass on third down. Completes this one to the left side. Traquan Smith. First down, Raiders. Back to pass all day to throw it. And another completion to Smith just outside the red zone at the 21. The throw over the middle again to Ziegler and it's, it's a nine yard pickup. Another pass completed. Smith again down to the six. Second and goal. That one was doomed from the beginning. It looked like it was in slow motion. And Coleman is tackled back at the six. The throw this time, touchdown, Traquan Smith. So once again, the Raiders extend their lead to a two touchdowns with just under four minutes left to go in the game. Darnold back to pass, throws complete. Valdez Scandling makes the grab at the 42. Back to pass again, throwing long and it's intercepted. Craven LeBlanc. What a thorn in the side of the Jets. To be very honest, that has been about the only thing that the Jets have going for them is the deep ball and that one just wasn't deep enough. Derek Carr, 37 attempts, 29 completions. He is having one brilliant night. And there's Cashman again. Throwing Montgomery to the ground. A four-yard loss on the play. Again, oh, my goodness. Again, he gets in there. He's having quite the night as well. So on third and 16... After a jet timeout, the throw is complete to Sellers, but he has nowhere to go. The punt on its way. Nicole Hardman receives it, and he breaks a few tackles and is inside Raider territory down to the 39. Let's see if the Jets can do anything with it this time. Fake handoff to Jackson. Throw deep into the end zone. And oh. Ross dropped that gimme pass. Donald drifting left and is finally sacked. Hurst getting to him back at the 45. That brings up third and 16. And Donald drifting left. Throws. Completes it to Ross. And he's down to the 20 yard line. Pass goes to Arsenal, and they didn't give him the touchdown. He's down at the one. The clock is still ticking to give us the Jackson. What a run. He's tackled at the three and a timeout has to be taken. That is the Jets last timeout. The throw into the end zone. Touchdown, Carl Arsenal. And that brings the score to 27 to 20, but there is hardly any time left in this game. Onside kick with 23 ticks on the clock. And this one is recovered by Ziegler. He refused to go down and finally tackled by Terry McLaurin at the 35. Coach Dale obviously with some <laughs> disgust on his face. And the victory formation by the Raiders, and this one is over. The Jets lose at home 27-20. Well, now we really have a dilemma. <laughs> the Jets have really put themselves in a position where they're going to need some big-time assistance if they plan on being the AFC East champs this season. They now fall another game back in the division and can only hope for a Bills loss to the Chiefs to help their cause. Now this was a dismal performance by Sam Darnold. 
only a 40% completion percentage, and with that, two interceptions and a fumble. I think it was amazing that with all that inconsistency, he managed three passing TDs. As a result of his poor play, it gave Las Vegas more opportunities with the ball. And use them <laughs> to their advantage they did. You only have to look at the time of possession numbers to see that the defense was just plain exhausted. That didn't stop some players from having outstanding games though. John Ross fought through dropping some passes and caught two of those receiving touchdowns. Justin Jackson wasn't so fortunate though. The Raiders had to be keying on him since he only carried the ball five times and lost five yards doing it. On a brighter note, Blake Cashman and Marcus May had a very impressive night amid the defense allowing over 300 yards. 14 tackles apiece and Cashman making six TFLs in the process. I think the only reason that May didn't have more plays in the backfield, well, let's face it, he's a safety and just isn't going to get nearly the opportunities that, say, a linebacker is going to get. Overall, though, awesome performances by both of them. As a result of this game, though, we have a couple of upgrades. Michael Winkler gets a pass protector upgrade, and while that's a nice thing to see, it's most likely going to benefit someone else next season. The Jets can't afford paying over $10 million a season to have him on the O-line. The other player is on defense. Right outside linebacker Lorenzo Carter has received a speed rusher upgrade where his pursuit attribute is the winner. The Bills have secured a spot in the playoffs with a 20-17 win over the Chiefs in Week 15. Well, that means that along with winning their last two games over the Ravens and Cowboys, the Jets have to rely on Philly and Washington to beat the Bills. They would then at least have a share of the division crown and by my accounts should win the division due to sweeping the Bills this season. If that doesn't happen, New York is going to have to rely on a wild card spot in which there are still a number of teams in the hunt. First order of business is a win at Baltimore. That might be somewhat problematic since they lead the AFC with Buffalo at 10 and 4 on the season and have the number 7 offense as well as the number 8 defense in the league. Guys like Lamar Jackson, Leonard Fournette and Antonio Brown on offense and Olivier Vernon, Michael Pierce, and Earl Thomas III on defense like it at the top of the heap and plan on staying there, I'm sure. Now that's going to do it for this week's episode of the New York Jets franchise here on the Football Freaks Sports Network. Once again, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and remember to subscribe and hit that bell for notifications of new videos as they come out. The Jets took another blow tonight, and their hopes of an AFC East crown dim even further. To stay in the hunt, I would think that winning the last two games of the season won't be optional. It's a foregone conclusion that Sam Darnold has to pick up the pace, and subsequently his consistency factor if there's any chance at coming out of Baltimore with a win. Oh, and it would be nice if the running game could help out a bit. Uh, just saying. To find out if the Jets have the stuff to ground the Ravens, be with us in M&T Bank Stadium. And until then, for Eurocat BB and the rest of the crew, this is Husker Eurocat saying so long for now, and have a good day, everyone.